Week 8 is upon us in the NFL, so today we're going to give our DeAndre Hopkins trade reaction, and we're going to give our matchups per the week, and also stay tuned for our NFL Week 8 superlatives. Another trade, man. The trade deadline's on the 5th. We got another wide receiver off the board. We had a minor, not a minor, but still, another trade that did not involve another wide receiver where the Seattle Seahawks added Ernest Jones. But we're going to talk about the bigger one here, and that's DeAndre Hopkins is now officially a Chief. So the Chiefs were looking like they don't need anyone. But they still added someone, I guess, you know, just because I think they, they needed to. Like, after last game, they needed to, for sure. Yeah. In my opinion. Well, whatever. They still win. doesn't really matter. If you're still winning, you don't need to. You're not in the biggest need of adding anyone. But again, DeAndre Hopkins felt like was going to be the guy just because it felt like a cheaper option, simpler trade, like nothing too much to give up. Like at the end of the day, it was a conditional fifth. Yeah. I could turn to a fourth. But overall... DeAndre Hopkins, again, I know he's old. He might not be the same old DeAndre Hopkins, but he still can get open. He is still going to provide some so much help for Mahomes and the Chiefs and wants to get Juju back as well. Um, this Ross, He's a good Rashi Rice replacement right here. They're like, this is a Rashi Rice replacement. So here's my thing, right? You know me. I'm a big DeAndre yeah, Hopkins know. fan. <laughs> and obviously it sucks that he put on two of my division rivals. So I'm happy he's out of the division once again. You got to remember this. Like, yes, this year wasn't his greatest year. However, throughout his career, what makes DeAndre Hopkins so special is that he's been a 1,000-yard receiver or close to a 1,000-yard receiver every year. And he's only had one elite quarterback, which was Houston version of Deshaun Watson. And then Kyler Murray is right there, too. So I'm not going to disrespect him that much either. But he, those two, that's it. He, I think he started off his career with, like, I don't know how many different quarterbacks. Um... And then they decided to blame him for Houston problems and sent him to Arizona where he was a 1,000-yard receiver his first year. Then his injuries took over a little bit. For me, the, listen, at the end of the day, like a stat I saw, since 2013, he's been fourth lowest in drop rate. So it shows that he still has one of the elite hands in the NFL, which is 1.6%, which is only behind Larry Fitzgerald, by the way, less than a percent. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, Terry McLaurin and uh, Michael Thomas, right? And this guy is, uh, I don't know, like obviously I didn't, I didn't watch Larry play a lot, but I know he's been elite, especially as a slot guy, slant guy, however you want to put it. Michael Thomas is memed to be the slant guy. boy. Um, he's a deep threat guy as well, right? Him and Terry McLaurin both, but like him. So for me, it's like, and he shows he could get open quickly, whether it be in the slot spot, and then he could win any jump ball, like I said, right? Um, so for me, I think this is like, it was either him, they tried to go after Cooper Cup, and we'll talk about Cooper Cup as his, trade um status is getting higher and but higher it's simple the one one good glaring need that chiefs needed for last year for wide receivers is not to drop the ball yeah and that's that right and they've there. been and, they've and that's been, that right there it makes it like okay yeah you know it makes sense why the chiefs got and they've had drops uh, terrible drops as well right and see yeah so it's perfect i think this is the this is what i said before the season started that this is a name that they would it's, end it's, up there. it's the perfect or budget. deontay johnson but this yeah. guy's better than deontay johnson perfect perfect opinion. budget option he's i know he's old but like at the end of the day, Mahomes we, is throwing you the ball. Mahomes is throwing you the ball. Even though he's struggling to. Yeah, but for sure. But the thing here is that we probably could see D Hop win a Super Bowl. I hope so. <laughs> I really do. I know that, people don't want the Chiefs to that, win. That's probably but. the biggest, one of the big takeaways for DeAndre Hopkins is like, yes, I could finally get a chance at a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, like since actually, at, I guess the late ends of his Houston tenure. Yeah. But that's about it, right? But yeah, um, I love this trade for both him and. Um, oh, yeah. He's going to love it because. Uh, you went from Will Levis to Patrick Mahomes. True. And even with, like, Will Levis and Slash kind of bad Tannehill, he was over a 1,000 yard receiver, so I have no worries that he'll fit in this offense and get open. Well, one thing I want to quickly ask about Mahomes, how is he second in MVP odds? Makes no sense. There's only three people, and there's nobody else. I think it's by FanDuel, by the way. Yeah. I don't like, blame other betting sites. FanDuel, but... FanDuel sucks. <laughs> uh, there's, there's only three people, and there's nobody else touching him. It's Lamar, Allen, and Goff. Yeah, and nobody else is close right now. It's just simple as that. Those Out of the three. QBs, especially. Yeah, those are those. That is the ballot, and right now, those are gonna be QBs anyways. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, I wanted to give Derrick Henry. Some yeah, you <laughs> chuck Derrick Henry in there. Yeah, but the, at the end of the day, like nobody's close. Yeah, right. It makes sense. Like, Baker was bad. until the last. The last games. two games he was bad. Yeah, so like I just wanted to get that out of the way as well. But we mentioned Cooper Cup as well. Um, he's obvious his trade. Uh, the Rams are apparently calling teams. They're willing to take some salary back where they're looking for a second. Makes sense. Cooper Cup is still elite. It's just his injury concerns that are the issue. Um, Chiefs were obviously in on him. I think Diana Rossini from The Athletics said that um, the Chiefs were going after Cup. They just couldn't fit the 
Yeah, uh, they needed a third team to take on salary, etc. So D Hop became the choice for them, which was an easy choice afterwards as a secondary one. But we're again, we're gonna, we're talking about wide receivers. We talked about it with Ayuk. We talked about it with uh, Devonte Adams and Amari Cooper. And now we're here. Is it which team do you think should be going out and get him off the bat? Like first team should be on the phone. The first team that comes up to my mind without any like thought or anything is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, reason being is with Russell Wilson. You are a better passing team, but behind George Pickens, you don't really have anyone. And again, George Pickens and Cooper Cup as a duel, you have a good, solid route runner who could run the middle of the field. And then you have Pickens being the contested catch guy. It it adds versatility to your wide receiver group, but also it just adds much needed talent because after after Pickens, who is... And even he's been like, he's more labeled as uh, just like a contested catch guy. Yeah, yeah, right. That's true. So, like, you need someone else that just to, like take control and get open quick. And Cooper Cup is that guy when healthy. And after Pickens, I think it's just Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson sounds much better as a three and a four yeah. than a number two. Hey, receiver. Van Jefferson, former teammate of Cooper Cup. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, for me, like I agree with that. I think that should be the number one choice out of the all. all the, this was no thought. Team, yeah. Right? This was like zero thought. Like yeah. off the top. Listen, of my head. every team should be calling for yeah. Cooper Cup, even if you're the Detroit Lions, but they have other issues they need to address first. Uh, for me, I mean, if they if they really want to go all out and win it this year, and the way they're looking, it's the division rival, it's the Baltimore Ravens, right? Um, Zay Flowers is good, but you still don't have that elite one. You bring him; he's elite when he's on the field. You partner. You already have the the. the listen, people are already labeling this team as the best team in the NFL. Yes, a little bit disrespect to the Chiefs. I disagree with that. They are second overall, maybe in the NFL, unless you have the Detroit Lions. I don't know about your thinking there. I have the Ravens ahead. Um. For me, it's like, okay, now you, you partner up with that dynamic backfield. Yes, Lamar needs to get it done in the playoffs, but he's shown this year that he can, with the help of Derrick Henry and even Justice Hill to, to a uh, lesser extent, he could find the guy, right? That was Mark Andrews is getting going now. Finally, that was, yeah. uh, likely kind of like going on with that tandem. Rashad Bateman for a deep threat guy now. Put him in the middle. It opens the field up even more than you already do or already have. Um, with the with those guys, so I think like if the Ravens are serious to go for all this year, they should look to make this move to help um, that offense out uh, immediately. Yeah, you gotta make big money moves to win the big trophy. At the end of the day, that's what Chiefs said. They added DeAndre Hopkins when they're undefeated. So if I'm the Ravens, I'm definitely you gotta explore that for sure. Last question before we get off this: there's another name that teams are making calls on. How much are you believing the fact that Miles Garrett could be on the trade block? Uh, Miles Garrett on the trade block is going to be obviously tough because, uh, again, he is a number one overall pick. Not yeah. even, not just first round pick, a number one overall yeah. pick and has lived up to it, right? Um, it's not his fault that like Mahomes and all those guys went after. At the end of the day, he's living up to his number one pick status yeah. and why he's an edge rusher. Even though if you do a redraft, you're probably going like mm-hmm. second. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, uh, it's going to be tough. Here's the thing, because like when you're looking at these big pass rushers, it's his name and Max Crosby. Him, yeah. Max Crosby made it adamant that he wants to stay. I still want him traded. Yeah, no, I don't see you want him traded. But like, if that's the case, that gives me more of a reason why Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett might actually be like wanted, because you know, Max Crosby is labeling himself to be not available. Yeah. But at the same time, if I'm the Cleveland Browns, I know you suck right now. But you can't get rid of Miles Garrett. Yeah. Right. It's like the you Denver Broncos. It's, like, it's, it's like Denver Broncos last year. Like, I know you suck right now, but you can't get rid of PS2. It's just simple yeah. as that. And before, like, I mean, the Broncos kind of did it with um, Vaughn in the past. Yeah. Right. So it, it's going to be that. You mentioned Broncos. That could be the similar esque vibe. Yeah, but like, Vaughn was a little bit up there in age. Right? True. These are not even that up there yeah. in age. They're still in their primes. It's like, yeah, yeah cause the Browns are sellers. The Titans are now sellers. Harold Landry's in the mix, right? The Giants with the Zizo Gilari. So it's going to be crazy. Um, next week, we'll be dropping a preview of the trade deadline, so we'll save that talk for then. Um, in the meantime, let's just get to the matchups for week eight. We're almost halfway there, or roughly halfway there at this point. Some of the teams obviously playing their eighth game. Let's start off. There were a couple of decent matchups, like the Bucks. We can't really put them in because of the injuries. Get well soon, Chris Godwin. Get well soon, uh, Mike Evans as well with that matchup. But let's talk off. Talk about two kind of disappointing teams. Well, all... F- the two matches we're going to talk, all four teams have been disappointing. The first one, the Philadelphia Eagles versus Cincinnati Bengals. Both teams, especially the Bengals, kind of getting up as of The late. Bengals have been good recently. They've figured out their offense, and uh, defensively, they're not as much of a liability because, you know, they got some of their pieces mm-hmm. back from injury. Uh, um, at the moment, the bigger concern right now is, for me, the Eagles uh, because they have been just very inconsistent. They have done this thing where, like, you know, they win one, lose one, win two, lose one type of thing. 
Like every time they take a step forward or two steps forward, they always find a way to take a step back. And uh, that's good in terms of like, yeah, you're not like, you know, all the way crumbling like how your division mates are in Dallas. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not really, that's the reason why you're not really excelling. Because at the end of the day, no matter if they take one step forward or two steps forward, they always just find a way to take one step back. And this game's going to be tough because with this offense already rolling, Burrow, I think, has a stat where he's the second highest, like, second in, like... Burrow you know, would be the MVP conversation yeah. if that wasn't a bad start. Like, Burrow's second in the targets missed, like, least targets missed. Yeah. Like Kirk Cousins first, Burrow's second. And uh, in percentage-wise, which Hayes and Higgins now finally, like, Higgins is finally going to as well. This Eagle secondary is going to have a rough, tough day guarding both of these guys. Um, Gusecki has done well in that tight end spot, right? They've been missing a tight end the last few years. I don't know who they had one before. Like, it was a couple years ago that they had someone. Oh, well, he went to... Uzama, CJ yeah, Uzama, Uzama, yeah. yeah. Even though he got, the Jets. Yeah, no, but I don't even know where CJ Uzama is. But like, yeah. CJ Uzama was a, the fit in Bengals tight end. Right now, Gusecki's doing well yeah. to do that. And uh, again, their backs, Chase Brown and Moss have been decent. Brown has been taking over more as the one. Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. <laughs> uh, but overall, like, this offense is going... And Burrow is cooking. I'm scared for the Eagles' defense right now because they ha- they've they been very inconsistent. It's funny, though, because their defense, Cooper DeJean's been in the starter and he's kind of like somehow he's the best rated guy or whatever reason. Listen, I don't want disagreeing with you fully, but then you got to look at the Bengals' defense. They haven't been performing the greatest. And, you know, Derrick Henry probably has Opoy right now on lock. I don't think Saquon's far off. No, um, no, necessarily. He's not. <laughs> and Saquon, like, was obviously, like, yes, it was a revenge game for sure, uh, even though he didn't say it. Uh, it was, he he didn't treat it like it or the way he worded it in the presser. He's still like, for the most part, has been the consistent part about this offense, right? AJ Brown is now back healthy. So this could be a Tedden game that could be a shootout, most likely. Because they, like you said, the Eagles defense hasn't been fully performing. I don't think the Bengals defense has been fully performing. But on Jalen Hurts also yeah. is a running got mobile guy. And we saw what Lamar kind of did. I'm not saying he's Lamar level. But even to that point, to the stat you said about Burrow, Hurts is on that list. Hurts is on that list, yeah. Hurts is on that list. He's on the list. And, uh, he, he's like four. And AJ Brown is back, second game back. Devontae Smith is now back. Um, I'll see if Dallas Goddard was out, I think. He's so, like, back. if you're, like, comparing this, to, like, Eagles, obviously, offense to, like, a lesser Baltimore, the the Bengals and the Ravens put on an absolute shootout. Yeah. That went to overtime. Exactly. So, you could expect a shootout here in this game as well if uh, both offenses you know, play, like, to their standard that they have set. But overall, it on paper, like, Eagles defense is better. So they should be the ones able to yes. figure out. Yeah. So, like, if in that case, you're leaning towards Eagles. But I am pick. I think I picked the hotter team, which is the Bengals right now. And that that's who I picked for in, in general. And our Listen, pick comes in. I picked the Eagles for this game. Um, Personally, I think, I hope th- this is a kind of a trajectory, the right, right trajectory. This is what, two wins in a row now? Um, yeah, yeah. But again, Snick Sirani still concerns me <laughs> from that side of the ball. Uh, one thing I do want to say, last year when we, not even you, but, you know, I was somewhat crazy for putting the Eagles fifth on my power rankings when they were undefeated. Proved me right at the end. I'm hoping, like, this year, like, people are co- still saying, oh, yeah, the Eagles were concerned. I want to say I called that out early on that I was concerned. Yeah, yeah. But now nah, this year, I'm hoping it, they kind of flip it, and they have to because... Let's move on to the next matchup. Uh, just to make it clear, I picked the Eagles for this game. You picked the Bengals. I picked the Bengals. Uh, Reason being, Bengals aren't in September anymore as well. I'm that's sure. what they're playing. Good. <laughs> okay. Fair. Uh, Cowboys Niners. The next two matchup. That's a big matchup for the week. Also, two disappointing teams. Let's start off with the Cowboys once again because you mentioned the Eagles. Um, both teams are have to. Be, or I mean, obviously the Commanders are in uh, play here, but Jaden Daniels is now hurt. I don't know if he's gonna, which sucks because I wanted to preview that game. So uh, with the against yeah, Caleb Williams, Williams versus Daniels, uh, but I, we don't know if Daniels' status if he's gonna play or not because he's not practicing. Um, in this case, though, Cowboys need to win. They have to have a win, and they're lucky they're playing a depleted Niners team. Speaking of the Niners, uh, Debo has been released from hospital and has a chance to play this weekend from his pneumonia, but we don't know if uh, if that's the case yet. Kittle's day to day, and we know Ayuk is out. But going back to the Cowboys, off a of bye week, let's see what happens. If they shit the bed, excuse my language, if they sh- crap the bed, I guess. No, that's fine. Yo, stay be, blunt. Yo, be blunt. Be blunt. Yeah, be blunt. Bro. I will. They suck. McCarthy's got to be gone. McCarthy's got to be gone. Yeah. Right? The re- I don't know who's home for this game. I didn't check that much. But if you're telling me you had a bye week to prep and you saw what the Niners went through and you saw what Brock Purdy went through, who are going to be motivated, don't get me wrong, and Kyle Shanahan was going to be, I'm not saying he'll get fired, but he has to make a proper game plan for them. McCarthy's got to go. Because, first of all, 
Jerry Jones is coming out saying if they added Derrick Henry, he would not be doing what he's doing right now because it wouldn't fit his scheme. Like, make that make sense to me as well. Like, you already, you're the owner. You're lucky you can't, you should fire yourself. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah. You, Obviously. You have After to fire yourself. That take on the radio, the local Dallas radio there. Bro, Jerry Jones is a complete dumbass, right? Even if you have a top tier running back on your team, Derrick Henry will still fit in your team. I mean, that's the, a, that's literally Lamar Jackson and him. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm saying, like, save the Colts with yeah. John Taylor at Derrick Henry. Yeah. I'm not going to be mad. I mean, I'm not, literally, the... I, I don't care. Like, you know, you have two sick backs Detroit on at the same now. Browns right? Detroit is working, yeah. Chubb and Hunt. Yeah, Chubb and Hunt worked well yeah. so much, like, for so, so long. Yeah, just like you also have more... They have no one. Exactly. <laughs> um. Anyways, that's just a side. Going back to this, they, uh, listen, it's going to be a predictable offense. So the Niners defensively know what they have to do to... um. Do what that is. Just du- just double team CD Lamb and make any- anyone else beat you, and maybe get a pa- somewhat of a pass rush going because we can put Dak under pressure. That's literally what the game plan should be defensively. In my and de- and defensively, they are more so healthy than they are on the offensive side. But speaking of, if you're going on the Dallas defensive side, their run defense is shit. Yeah. And the Niners couldn't get a their run game going against the Kansas City Chiefs, which is understandable because because the Kansas City Chiefs, they're the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, right now, you should be looking, hopefully, um, for my fantasy team's sake, Jordan Mason to cook this game as well and gash open Zimmer's defense. And uh, again, like the, like we said last week, this Niners defense, you know, use the run game to set up the pa- play-action bootleg. And um, that that's their identity. And they weren't able to do that last week, which made Brock Purdy be more of a pocket passer or, like, you know, just, like, normal passing game. And which wasn't good because Purdy did not play well. I mean, his healthiest receiver was a guy who got shot two weeks ago as his wide receiver one, arguably. What? Yeah. Rick but, Pearsall. Yeah, like, honestly, that's true. It is tough, don't get me wrong, especially in games of missing all his injury, but you need Purdy to play better at the end of the day. Those interceptions were terrible. I expect a better game from Purdy. I expect Jordan Mason and his run game to cook. And if they are able to cook, and it, it might be ropes for Dallas. Um, Sorry, I'm going to clarify myself. He was shot before the season started, but got cleared two weeks yeah. ago. Um, to your point, I also I believe have more belief in Kyle Shanahan to have a better game plan. Even though Mike McCarthy had an extra week to prep, and I still feel like that's not that's not going to happen. Um, you know, arguably the guy you could put in deep point conversations is Fred Warner, and uh, he's still on that side of the ball, and he'll yeah, be Nick better. Bosa. Uh, and Nick Bosa, right? So I, I picked the Niners because I think their defense is overall better, and I expect Shanahan to cook up a better yeah. game plan um, offensively because now he knows who he has. I Debo's pick- the only question mark, and Kittle's a question mark, but we'll see how that. I picked I picked the Niners as well just because um, I'm looking at rushing, right? I I expect the Niners to have a better rushing offense than the pack um, the Cowboys, and which will be a big thing because a lot of pressure will be on Dak. And I also expect the Niners to have a better rushing defense than the Cowboys because um, one the Cowboys have no rushing offense and two the Cowboys rushing defense has been terrible and like we saw Gibbs and Montgomery run over run all over these guys you saw Kamara absolutely destroy them as well so overall this run defense has not been fixed to a, to the point this point in the season which all is right. still not I don't understand how let's get to our superlatives our quick picks here with the upset team and lock team I'll go first with the upset team first off I want to say get well soon to Andy Dalton and his family who were in a car accident um so Thank God everybody's okay there. But because of that, Andy Dalton will not be playing this week. And it will be Bryce Young making his return back this season. And I'm putting the Denver Broncos on upset alert. I'm not saying that because even if it was Andy Dalton, I would have put, put him on upset alert. Because, yes, the Broncos are cooking. They're 4-3. and three. They're, they're, Listen, I picked them to win still. But I would not be surprised if the Panthers kind of made a, a, a like an upset win in this week. Because... One, Bryce Young's learning, sit, sat down for the first time in his career properly and is learning. So let's see what he could do. Um, obviously, we'll see how he performs, right? At the end of the day, it's a, it's just the Broncos are still not a solidified team. Yes, they're a playoff team, quote-unquote, right now, but we both anticipate them to fall off a little bit. Yeah. But the, what the Broncos have done has been successful. Impressive, yeah. yeah. I went with the Cleveland Browns upset alert over the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, reason being is like, there's just something about these division games where, like, Baltimore starts making so many stupid mistakes, right? Last year, they lost to, again, the Steelers, pick in the red zone by Lamar. Uh, they lost to the Browns, another pick six, which uh, allowed the Browns come in. I think that's uh, Deshaun Watson got hurt that game last year as well. But, like, he played well in that game as well. This game, yes, I know they don't know who their quarterback is. If, if it's, it's, James, it's James Winston. It should be James it, Winston. It is. It is okay, yeah. So if it's Jameis Winston, obviously they have a chance more offensively, a guy who could push the ball downfield. 
against a defense who has actually really struggled against the pass. Yeah. Right? With Baker carving up. But they did lose Amari Cooper. Huh? <laughs> so the Browns did lose Amari Yeah, Cooper. but overall, like, there's just something about these these division games where, like, the Ravens just start playing so sloppy. They're, which is what I don't understand. They're also on a high right now. As well, yeah. They're That's also right. on a big high as well. Um. Okay. Well, one thing I want to ask very, very quickly, just thought of right now in the moment, just a quick yes or no. If the Denver Broncos do get into the playoffs, since I mentioned them right now, is Sean Payton coach of the year or is it still going to be Kevin O'Connell? <laughs> I would... I might lean Shea on a Sean Payton. I, honestly. That, they were way worse. Yeah, there, there should be, they should have been way worse. Yeah. It probably should be Sean Payton then. Okay, I just wanted to just get uh, just say that. Let's, we'll see how that goes. But players to watch. Player returning. Tua Tonga Valoa. Can he get the Miami offense rolling again? Tyreek Hill, Jaden Waddle will probably be happy because they were only had two catches combined against the Colts. Um, Tua, just got to watch. Is he going to, like, listen, he's not wearing a guardian cap. I don't think that's the right decision, even though I'm not saying that will prevent any anything it's, yeah it's uh too much compared to like what his history is but let's see what he looks like he's uh, obviously they're going against the arizona cardinals as well who've been an up and down weird team as well um who have a good like they have a good de- sorry the dolphins do have a good defense that did well against the colts and i uh, tua should put, help them get over the top but the last time we saw tua before the injury was he was not good against the bills so it's gonna be interesting to see how quickly he gets acclimated and but yeah, going. like Tyreek Hill should get going at yeah. this game, right? Like he's probably he did say it, but start me in fantasy. No, I should be fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, players to watch. Did we even say a lock yet? Oh, shoot. okay. We yeah, whatever. I'll say my offensive player. Then we'll yeah, go back yeah. to a lock. Offensive player again, Bryce Young. Right. Um, let's see. Andy Dalton gave him a little QB bump when he came in. Let's see if Bryce Young gets that. But like you said, the biggest thing is like he got to sit back. He got to watch a win. He also got to see a veteran work right at the end of the day like yeah last game was wasn't good for Danny Dalton don't get me wrong but the week before against the Atlanta Falcons you, you they weren't bad like they didn't get dominated or anything like they were in the game the whole entire time and obviously the win you know, Dalton I think threw for 300 yards so yeah Bryce Young got to see some decent football and some decent quarterback play from a solid veteran that you could learn from and him stepping aside might have probably helped and let's see how Canales game plans Bryce Young into this offense as well but let's go into our lock I'll start off I'm going to go to the obvious, obvious one, the Kansas City Chiefs or the Las Vegas Raiders. I think Gardner, I think Aiden O'Connell is hurt. Yeah, it's Gardner Minshew. It's Gardner Minshew starting, and uh, again, Gardner Minshew hasn't been the greatest except for that one Baltimore Ravens game. And the Chiefs are coming off beating the 49ers. Like, they're honestly in their easier stretch of the schedule now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just if honestly, if the Chiefs lose this game, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Because it makes zero it's sense. It's a game. That's and you got DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Right? Like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, for me, I went with Detroit Lions because D- Tennessee lost DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, they had moments this season. I don't, I think it's still Mason Rudolph. I'm not 100 percent sure who the starting quarterback is, but at the end of the day, Detroit's offense is way too high, high powered. Um, defense didn't perform terrible. Um, so even though Tennessee's defense is decent, so. yeah, but like again, like how much can their defense really? Exactly, do? And that yeah. offense is has been insane. And I, Jamison Williams is missing two games though because of the suspension. But again, I think they'll, they'll be just fine. Um, okay, let's close it off. Defen- uh, defensive players to watch. I went with the Jets' defense, but more specifically, Quentin Williams, because you're going up against the New or uh, New England Patriots. In these last two weeks, the defense has not looked good. Um, the run defense, especially, has been terrible. And then, if that's the case, um, Ramondre Stevenson is a good running back uh, in this league. Uh, on top of that, your secondary is thin as well, so a lot of pressure is going to come uh, onto the the D line led by Quentin Williams. Your your best player on the defense, obviously, right? So, yeah. um, if the Jets want to turn their fortunes around, Aaron Rodgers got another injury added to his list already. As I don't even know what's his status fully, fully like if he's gonna play. But defensively, at least get your that was your bread and butter. Get that fixed. Otherwise, it's gonna that Salah firing is gonna look even more stupid if that's the case. It looks very stupid right now. But I also went with another defense, and that is the Eagles secondary for reasons I said before. Uh, Chase is going. Burrow is going. Higgins is finally going right now. Um, again, Gasecki's done good. Their rookie guy, Yossi Voss, has been, you know, yeah. targeted as well. And uh, overall, this Bengals passing offense has been cooking. And again, we have known the Eagles defense to be inconsistent, missed tackles, and their secondary hasn't been, obviously, the greatest. But overall, I think they should be able to hold their own because at the end of the day, like you said, Cooper Dijon is actually playing well. Hopefully, Darius Slay is still doing his thing. CJ Garner-Johnson, they still they have the pieces to do it. They just see if they could, you know, figure it out and get it done on the field 
All right, that closes out our week eight preview. Make sure you guys like this video, comment your thoughts down below, and subscribe. Hit that post notification bell because all our NBA content is out. Uh, so make sure you guys check out those videos as well, um, as well as uh, any future NFL content coming out next week. Like I said, trade deadline preview, so you don't want to miss that video. Follow our socials link down below. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.